Let's get to the sports talk. Built for another big trade, and they'll try to uh, do some things around the edges, but the Clippers. You think there's a deal to be made out there for them, a, a, a hypothetical? Well, the difference between the Lakers and the Clippers, one of them, is that the Clippers can still trade their first-round pick, at least their 2020 first-round pick. And if you're if you're the Clippers and you've spent all that draft equity on Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, you are all in. And if you're all in, Maurice Harkless, who makes about $11 million, plus Patrick Patterson, plus your first-round pick, can that get me Marcus Morris? Can that get me another another 3-4 combo forward that puts me even closer to the Lakers, closer to the top? They thought they had Marcus Morris in uh, July, three years, $40 million. He said no to that deal, ended up getting less from the Spurs, ends up with the Knicks. But that's a player that they had great interest with, that they saw who could fit with Paul George, with uh, Kawhi Leonard. And, and so to see them revisit that is certainly plausible. I would expect that package to be out there uh, I, because, again, once you're this far in, you got to go all in, and the Lakers are, are way better than most people thought. I mean, it's going to be competitive just to get out of the first, second round of the West. In the East, look, the presumptive favorites were Milwaukee and Philadelphia going into the season. Milwaukee is... A- and um, Marcus Walker, he, he can help them. And, you know, another uh, good forward that can help the Clippers out. And uh, it's like another another player to go along with Paul George and Kawhi. Like they they, you know, they got Lil Williams and um and my trust hero, you know they got them, it's just like another good player to to get them close to the Lakers. That's what they uh go try to revisit if he uh if they trade for him because they already deep in, so they might well go for it. <laughs> Running away with the East and really the whole. I mean, they're twenty four and three. They're killing everybody. Um, I, I, this is. If, if there were ever a twenty four and three team that can't just rest on its laurels of being twenty four and three, that has to look really hard at itself and say, "Are we sure we're this good? Are we sure there's nothing else we can do to make our team better?" It's this Bucks team. This is the biggest moment for this organization, probably since Kareem Abdul Jabbar was there, right. um, with Giannis staring at the Supermax in the summer. I, I would accept them to stand packed, but you got you got to expect they're going to look at stuff, right? Yeah, like and especially you know anything around the edges and teams like Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Boston. I don't expect those teams to make wholesale moves. Philly made you know three significant moves last season, but you know. A Milwaukee team, they're not going to mess with this. And I think... Um, uh, uh, I don't think they need nothing else. To be honest, I just think they, they already got the team that got them to 24-3. I think they already got the players around Giannis that, that fit everything that everything Giannis do. I just I don't think they need nothing else. I don't... Think so because they they a complete team right now. They a complete. They ain't they new addition is like the other Lopez brother and uh, uh, Wesley Matthews. Like they was good addition, fell right along with this team and and and, and the train's still rolling. It's still like last year. They even better this year. Boston to me though is the team that they need, they absolutely need more size. How do they get it, Zach? Well, let's start with Milwaukee. Yeah. Very creative last year, four seconds. Yeah, that's that's what they need because it's it's only Tyson and Williams. They need more size to to be able to compete when it comes playoff time. They still a good team, but that's what they need. That's what they lacking in right now. Lack of size on that team. Like small ball is good at some point, but some point you're gonna need a bid, like some more bids to go along with them. Because other teams that they got size, like Milwaukee, they got size. They got the two Lopez brother. Then they got Giannis. Uh Sixers got a B. They got Simmons. They got Horford. Um Toronto. They uh they got uh Gasol, they got Baca. Uh, run uh, Hollis Jefferson, like uh, it's it's, more, it's like teams in the East. They got more size than them. That they need this size come this playoff run. From your right. I think they'll look at a guy like Robert Covington, JJ Redick, if he were to become available. 
Um, and, and I have heard uh, they, they're a little bit under the luxury tax. I think they would go over it for a deal that puts them over the top. So look, look for that. And they have the Pacers yeah. pick um, that they got over the summer from Malcolm Brogdon. That'll, that'll be out there. As for Boston, look, the question they're going to have to ask is, um, yes, everyone says we need size. We need another center. Are there any centers or any big men out there who move the needle for us to the degree that it's worth Marcus Smart? Because it's going to have to be Marcus Smart. It's not going to be Hayward, Tatum, or Brown, or Kemba Walker. And and I'm, I am I think the answer to that question is probably going to be no. Boston will do what it always does. It will call all over the league. They'll be on the phone with everybody. They'll try to get something for nothing from a team. And you know, Bobby, Bobby, <laughs> get Marks, it, get it. Bobby Marks, our uh, front office insider, had a great fact the only real in-season trade Danny Ainge has done in this entire tenure was 2015 Isaiah Thomas from Phoenix. That's the only real in-season trade he did. Wow. And you look at the centers that are available versus the three-headed monster that they have at center, it's probably not better than what they have based on what they can get. And like you said, they're not looking to trade any of these wings. I think this will be a team that, you know, still when they get into playoffs, especially Philadelphia with Embiid, you know, that size is still going to be a problem for them. Yeah, Boston, maybe that's a buyout team, too. Maybe yeah. they'll look at the buyout market. And Philly, look, we all know Philly's going to look at shooting, right? And yeah. they're going to have their first-round pick and play. Cobbling together salaries for them is going to be difficult. But Mike Scott plus Zaire Smith, that gets you somewhere into, like, a $10 million player coming back. So they'll look at all the usual – name all the shooters. They'll look at all the shooters. That's right. That's right. The team that we haven't talked about that maybe is a little bit below this level of conversation – um, and I think has maybe the most volatility in the whole league is the Houston Rockets, and they always try. You know they're always going to try. Uh, they can't trade Eric Gordon because of the contract extension, which actually kind of cripples their flexibility. He's the, in terms of salary and appeal around the league, he's the one that really gets things done. That leaves Capella and PJ Tucker and whatever draft assets they can. They still can trade picks despite right. uh, the the Westbrook deal. This is a, a big moment for Houston. This is really a moment of truth coming for this entire organization. Mike D'Antoni turned down a contract extension this summer. He's in the last year of his deal. He has shown no inclination to want to do a new deal there. He is playing it out this season. And ever since Daryl Morey sent that tweet out earlier this season, there's even more pressure on him with this new ownership group to advance deeper. So you turned down that contract extension. It could have kept you in Houston through the 2020 season. So that means you all in for this year. So that means it's pressure on your back to be able to get this team deep in the playoffs. You can't have no hiccups during this playoff run. That means you throw your chips all in the basket. That means you have to advance this team. You got to figure out a way to get this team far in the playoffs to be able to win it all. Because if you ain't going to get it done, the new owner's going to look somewhere else. I would have just stay my contract and know I'm secure. But now it's all in. It's all or nothing right now. So you taking this big risk, you better hope you get this team deep in the playoffs because the owners are going to be looking to see what they're going to do with you if you don't advance deep in the playoffs. Than they have in the playoffs. The only thing left for them is the NBA Finals. I think this era of Rockets basketball is at stake uh, with this season. And, you know, they're going to try everything they can to improve the it, team. I don't know if there's a lot of moves out there for them. Well, Tucker is just invaluable for everything they do. Corner threes and defense. Uh, I just don't know that they can spare him. And that just leaves... What can Capella plus whatever get us? And Capella has been played off the floor in the Warrior series, but really only the Warrior series, and the Warriors are gone. So I, it's going to be a very tricky spot for them. Daryl Morey has tried any number of two-way, three-way, four-way scenarios to get Andre Iguodala from Memphis. That doesn't seem to be uh, a scenario that is going to come into play. I think he's kind of thrown his hands up on that one. Um. And, you know, we'll see. I mean, Houston, they're always going to call around. They're always going to try, but it's going to be tough for them. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For highlights and analysis,